who's your business hero? Interesting. I can't rest that mantle on the shoulders of one person. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to take it. Because I have many. Um, I kind of look at some of the, you know, chief executives and chairs and owners of some of the large kind of Asian multinational businesses that I've worked with. And I just look at their organisations. I look at the complexity of their organisations. I look at the sophistication of their organisations. And I'm going, gosh, this is just extraordinary. This is another level. Um, and, you know, I worked with a family um, a few years ago who own a Singaporean-based multinational group who are into real estate, mining, resources, you know, retail, hospitality, distribution, development. That's some serious diversification. Serious diversification. Wow. Which is... Which um, brings a serious complexity in itself. It, but not uncommon in Asia, interestingly. Mm-hmm. I mean, you look at the Japanese conglomerates... And they are conglomerates. Mm. You know, the Japanese pioneered the whole notion of a conglomerate. Um, it we roll a little bit differently like that in you know, US, UK, uh, Australia, and other markets. You know, we're kind of much more niche orientated. Um, but th- they've got large, sophisticated organisations with you know, significant employee bases, significant balance sheets, significant markets. You know, extraordinary. Um, and I've learned a lot from these people. Um, about you know running sophisticated enterprises at scale with balance sheets you know in the billions uh and you know it's it's interesting because they're not they're not all different to you and i you know you can sit down and have a really really good conversation and you can walk away with learning so much so there are some certainly people in that category um but you know my mentors are you know the people you walk into in the shop and only road who makes your lunch. You know, you got to learn something from that person, mm-hmm. right? Uh, it's the person you sit down tonight when you go to your local restaurant and you say, what did you do? I love asking that. What did you do? You know, how long have you owned this restaurant? What did you do before you had this restaurant? You know, I was sitting in an Indian restaurant the other night and we've got this little local Indian which we go to once a week. And the, you know, was a chef in five countries for large international four seasons hotels you know um, big organizations just this incredible love of food incredible love of food incredible love of preparing and serving food right and it comes through in everything you eat i learned from that person so it's it's i'm not that kind of uh you know my business hero is xyz person if I can't learn something from every interaction I have with every single person I interact with, there's something wrong with me. I'm not learning. That's a great answer. I'm not learning. Mm. So who's my mentor? I hope I have thousands of them, Christian. Um, that's my answer. Look, I, I know that that is the absolute truth with you because you will even walk past my office and you'll knock on my door and you'll ask me a question. And I know that it's because you want to, you're looking for, you're seeking an answer. It doesn't matter who you're asking, but you value who you ask. And, you know, and I, I, I walk away and I feel really nice about it because I think, you know what, he, he, he needed an answer today. And I may have given him the answer he needed or I may have completely given him nothing. Uh, but I know that you do that a lot and you've done that a long time. Um, you've got to be curious. Yeah, and I, I, and I think that's that's the, you are very curious. That's that's the commodity, isn't it? Like, yeah. Y- y- if you're not curious, how do you learn? Like, if someone comes to you and says, "I got all the answers," like, again, you're worried. You're worried, right? <laughs> so you got to be curious. Look, you know, it's funny when you use the word curious. I think of my son, who, if anyone thinks I talk a lot. Well, my EA today, Tracy, had to take him to school because we were filming early, and you know. She said to me, she came back, she goes, he does not stop talking. He is so curious about the world and he has an incredible story. And he was already, and I said, what are you talking about today? He, goes, he was pitching to me the school that he's going to open and how he's going to be the principal and what he's going to do. And I thought, Leonardo, you just light up my life. But it's so true. I, I, you know, I don't get frustrated by the questions because I encourage him and Lavender 
to ask as many questions as they can. There is never a stupid question. Have you heard that saying? The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Yeah, I've heard that saying. Don't worry. Lucy reminds me every day about why that three of us drive her crazy. And <laughs> it has a lot to do with me. Um, and, and I'm comfortable with that. Martin, which book or books um, that... Is there, is there a book or a series of books that have greatly influenced your life? or at least some of the decisions that you've made and maybe share one or two of those with, 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 your, with our audience? Yeah, I'm a really interesting cat. Um, I do read a bit. Yeah. Um, I don't watch television. Mm-hmm. And, the, and I never really have. So it means I read and I talk, right? I'm going to learn a lot more by having a conversation with someone that I am than watching television often. So I agree. The, what do I read? I read biographies. Mm-hmm. I love a good biography. What's a good biography that you've read recently? Um, or one that you recommend someone to read? Oh, look, I, I've read hundreds. Um, but And I've got a great library at home, and I read, you know, online and offline. But the... What's my, probably the most recent? Very belatedly, I actually read John Howard's biography, or one of uh-huh. his books. There's about three or four books on John Howard. But I think that John Howard, who I have met... I met John Howard in a... Uh, in a lounge in Sydney airport one day and I walked past him and I was Lord Mayor at the time and he was not clearly PM at that time and I said, uh, Mr Howard, I just want to introduce myself, I'm sorry for disturbing you but I just want to say, look, you know, uh, thank you for the work that you've done over the years on behalf of the nation and he said, well, if you grab me a cup of tea, uh, let's have a chat. Oh, wow. And uh, I didn't know John Howard at all and he was one of these people who you wouldn't see from the media persona of John Howard, Mm -hmm. was that with an interaction of John Howard, you walk out of that thinking you're probably one of the most special people in, you know, you know, that place at that time. He's totally focused on you. Totally. And it's genuine. It's not fabricated. It's very genuine. Um, And I kind of walked away from that. We, We spoke for 45 minutes. Wow. He knew everything about the politics of South Australia in a very contemporary manner. He even knew some of the issues I was confronting as Lord Mayor of Adelaide at a city level. I asked him a whole lot of questions about well, what do you think my alternatives would be? And he said, look, you know, you've asked, I'll share my two cent bit. But what amazed me, amazing. he knew the issues. He absolutely knew the issues. Um, and it was a, just a great sense of very authentic extremely authentic in a very practical feet on the ground type of manner um so i you know very belatedly uh, have read um lazarus rising which was one of his mm-hmm. you know biographies um but i read lots i read lots of biographies i read military history mm-hmm. um and always have i read a lot of russian history can i ask you a question with the military history is that because you get a lot of insight into strategy is it because uh, a lot of people do read military history for that reason? Is there another reason? Is it just a passion or a love for... Um, it's maybe not motivated by the want or the need to extract strategy, but you get it when you read it. Mm. I mean, I think one of the first things I read when I was very young was Sun Tzu, yeah. which is, of course, the Japanese book, Sun Tzu, The Art of, the Art of War. War. And, you know, that was a big thing at that time. That's course. also a big book. Yes. That scared me when I first saw it, and I never read it for about 20-something years. And it's, it, that's interesting. I mean, that's all about human behaviour, really. Yeah. That's what that's about. But that's fascinating. So I read a lot of military history. I read, I've got a particular interest in Russian history. Um, I read biographies, and I, I read actually relatively... I won't say I read broadly. I don't read kind of novels. I don't think I've ever read a novel. Um, You're not into the Mills and Burns? Uh, no. <laughs> not my gig. So, you know, I don't kind of do... I didn't picture you as no. a Mills and Burns type. But I do like reading. Yeah, yeah, I do like... Kind of like... Reading's terrific. Reading... Do you know the pattern that we've seen with every interview is top achievers are all readers. And it's really funny because I... interesting. I never read a book. Mm. Even when I did my MBA. Mm. Sorry to all the professors that are listening. Um, I wrote specifically to what I know I needed to write and then went and sourced the references to support it and I kind of knew where all that lived and it wasn't actually until a young very successful entrepreneur in Adelaide 
uh, were at breakfast talking. Um, he said to me, he, sh- he demonstrated how he knew so much. Um, and um, he says to me, you really need to start reading more. And I thought, wow, you're not even 30, you're 27. And you've just done a huge exit. You're telling me I need to read. You're right, I need to read. And you know, I've always had this dyslexia and ADHD, so I can't concentrate. And he said to me, go read Jim Quick's book, Limitless. I now read 800 words a minute. Mm. Like 760 something is my reading frame. Yeah. And I'm powering through a book and a half a week. Yeah. I cannot tell anyone who's listening enough the power of reading for focus, for discipline, mm. all of these things. And, and this guy, remain nameless, it'll probably, hopefully, will come on the podcast at some point. Uh, he spends a fair bit of time downstairs in this coffee shop here at Whistle and Flute. It was the best advice I'd ever been given, and it was the right book mm. because that book. You know, I'd never read all of Jim Collins's work. I've read it all now, no matter what. This year, mm-hmm. and it is, it my my intelligence has risen because it's you don't know what you don't know. I agree. And the only way to acquire it is to read it or conversation. That's why I love conversations because I can sit here today. I've learned so much today speaking to you and we are way over time and I, I don't think there's anyone that's going to be complaining about the, the length of the podcast but... I, I'm, I'm so grateful, Martin, that you took the time to share with, with my audience, but more importantly, even with me in my own selfish way, because even though we've known each other for a long time, there are many things there that I didn't know. And, and, I, and I'm really grateful that you've shared that. There, you know, 